Hello guys and welcome to another video. In this video we'll be checking how much VRAM do you need in 2023. As you can be seen on the screen here, without anything, we are using around 500 megabytes of VRAM. As the 40 series has a capacity from 12 gigabytes to 24, with the lowest end starting from 8, and the RX 7000 series starting from 20 to 24. Let's see what's the appropriate VRAM quantity in 2023 at 40. 1440p. But first, let's go back in time to 2013. And here we can see that mainstream cards had 2 gigabytes of VRAM from Nvidia and AMD as well. And some of them reached 3 gigabytes of VRAM, like the 2080X from AMD. But how much VRAM did some games back then really needed? Let's check Bioshock Infinity. As it can be seen on the screen, the GPU allocation is 3264 MB and the VRAM actual usage is 1432 in this scene. So as most GPUs having around 2 GB with a few having a bit more, this is good. One important thing to note here is that in different areas of the game we have have different VRAM usages. As here we have 1146 megabytes, down from more than 1400. Now let's look at 2016. We still have GPUs with 2 gigabytes of VRAM, but with C, 4 gigabytes of VRAM, and 8 gigabyte of VRAM. So we have 8 gigabyte of VRAM in 2016. Let's look at a game that was quite popular in 2016 that is Tomb Raider. Granted, this game has some enhancements, meaning that it's not the actual game that was released in 2016. It has some updates with better graphics, but the memory usage is more or less the same. As you can be seen, we went from 3.5 GB of VRAM to 4.2. So, 4.2 GB of VRAM produces textures like this. Let's move to 2023. The amount of detail here compared to what we saw previously, it's like night and day. And most likely, the VRAM allocation is more than twice. Some games will require more VRAM than others. This is the Callisto Protocol, and this is one of the best looking games released in the past six months. From my point of view, the level of detail for characters in, is unmatched by any other game. Before I start with VRAM usage in games, I will show you how I check the actual location. I'm using MSI Afterburner to monitor in-game memory allocation. I have enabled GPU memory usage per process and this will show the actual VRAM usage displayed on the screen and also in the graphs in the MSI Afterburner hardware monitoring tool. Now, what you see on the screen is a log of a run. I'm checking these two columns highlighted here memory usage and memory allocation. I'm gonna report only memory usage per process as this is the theme of the video. All values from the column will be added in an array in order to use it to see the max and the average memory usage in the scene. Now let's look at a benchmark run of Returnal. This one has the actual memory usage displayed and we can compare it to what MSI Afterburner is reporting. As it can be seen on the screen, the memory usage is in line with what the benchmark is reporting. Also, in the scenes that the memory reported by the benchmark is going down, MSI Afterburner reports the same. So let's have a look at the VRAM usage in the Callisto protocol. First, I'll try to match the graphics quality on the PC with the one on PS5 to see how much memory is needed. I lowered the video output of my PS5 to 1440p as on my PC. Next, I adjusted the graphics settings in order to look the same as on PS5 and that I kinda did it. Let's say that I'm 90% there. Now you can see on the screen the memory usage using these settings. I do have RT enabled. Probably the RT settings are a bit more than on PS5. I have no idea. Looking at the results, we can see a minor difference in memory usage between FSR enabled and disabled. I double checked and it seems that in the area I was checking the difference in VRAM usage is minor. Keep in mind that different areas of the game may require more or less, but from the looks of it, more than 8 gigabytes about VRAM is needed for this game. The following game that I'm checking is for Spoken. It can be seen on the screen that this game calculates the total amount of VRAM needed based on the settings used. The base value is important as that will always be needed. Next to it there is another value, Streaming. That value can be reached 6000 MB. If you have a GPU with 8 GB of VRAM, it means that 6.5 GB minimum will be used plus the streaming textures. But that leaves around 1.2 GB of texture to be streamed. If 
there are areas that need more than 1.2 GB of new textures, some textures will not be loaded and the game will look bad. This is how some modern games cope with GPUs with low VRAM. When looking at the VRAM usage, we can see that upscaling at max settings doesn't help that much. There are areas of this play to where we reach above 11 GB of VRAM and areas where we are below 10 GB. The standard settings may work for those with 8 GB of VRAM, but I suspect there will be areas where more is needed and the texture will not be loaded or you will be able to see how the GPU removes some texture from one area and adds texture in the area where you point your camera at. Let's look now at Returnal. According to the benchmark, the game is using below 7 GB of VRAM with epic settings. But is that the case? Can we trust the benchmark? Let's find out. In the area I'm currently fighting, it seems that the total VRAM message is below 7 GB, which is awesome. This means that the benchmark was almost telling the truth. And let me show you why I say almost. When I fight in another area, where there is a lot going on on the screen, the memory needed goes past 8 GB of VRAM. Having multiple enemies with a lot of visual details in the current area, the game pushes the memory usage to almost 9 GB. Could this be an isolated case? Case. We don't have areas like this all the time. This is an area where nothing is happening and for some reason sometimes the memory allocation goes above 8 GB. I didn't fought with enemies here so this is why I'm puzzled and I saw other areas like this in other parts of the game and this will make the testing a bit harder. And this is the area where I tested the game. But something may be happening here. I think that the game has not flashed the textures from previous areas or fights as the memory usage is quite high without any reason. As this is what I encountered as a worst case scenario, I'm gonna report this memory usage. As it can be seen on the screen, there is practically no difference between FSR and DLSS, both at quality and mask settings without upscaling. In other areas of the game, high settings uses less around 8GB of VRAM even after recompiling textures. I believe that 8GB is okay for this game, with some minor starters here and there because of memory allocation. Let's have a look at Star Wars Jedi Survivor. I tested the game with epic settings, epic settings and FSR quality and high setting to see the difference in VRAM usage. I know there is a lot of chatter online about this game, about the fact that it uses so much memory, but it looks good and it has high resolution texture that in some areas look really good. Like in this cutscene, the details that we see in the distance are amazing. Unfortunately, not all texture of the surroundings are high quality. For instance, in this cutscene, the bushes in front don't look that good. But we still see high VRAM usage and here I'm using FSR. And these are the VRAM usages for the different settings tested. The usage is quite high even for high settings. I suspect it's like that because of streaming textures. And this is how streaming textures are loaded. Nowadays games use this more often to, uh, than allocating the texture even if there is enough VRAM available. The last game I will showcase is Hogwarts Legacy. I'm using right now the RTX 3080, the 10 GB version. And I'm going I'm gonna slow the video and have it zoom to show you texture streaming in action. I tried to slow down some video capture to demonstrate that when there is not enough VRAM, texture will be offloaded and loaded more often and in some area this will be more pronounced. What I just showcased now is how the GPU offloads and loads textures as it doesn't have enough capacity to store all textures needed in this scene. But enough with this, let's look at the memory required in the castle, as I found out that that area uses a lot of VRAM. I'm gonna check ultra settings, afterwards apply FSR and DLSS quality and last but not least high settings and see the difference in VRAM usage. Ultra settings without upscaling uses up to 11.3 GB in this area and most likely there are other areas in the game that can use a bit more. To play at max settings even with upscaling 12 GB of VRAM is recommended. Now let's move to the overall results table and see how much VRAM few other games released in 2023 need. As already demonstrated for Spoken requires around 10 GB with a few ups to more than 11 GB at least in the area I was checking. Even lowering the settings a notch 
more than a gigabyte is needed. Adding the results from Hogwarts Legacy into the table, these are more or less in line with Forspoken. A gigabyte of VRAM simply doesn't cut it anymore for 1440p max settings, at least for open world games. When lowering the graphics settings, the game peaks at above 8 gigabytes of VRAM. When it comes to the averages, and a maximum of 9.2. Though GPUs with 8 gigabyte of VRAM benefit from texture streaming, but that may be causing stuttering if not enough system memory and visual glitches. Moving on to The Last of Us Part 1. The area that I was checking was a bit peculiar as the memory needed was constant, less than 100 megabyte variance between max and averages. This is why the results are like this. Also, another thing that I want to point out is that in this game DLSS uses less memory than FSR and I'm not sure why. Look at the memory usage on the screen. Graphic settings are exactly the same, but there is around 600 megabyte difference between those upscaling techniques. I'm unsure of what's happening here, but the less quality plus max settings require less VRAM than actual lowering the graphic settings a notch. Max settings requires 9.2 gigabytes, but only 7.9 when enabling DLSS. FSR quality max settings requires the same amount of VRAM as lowering a bit the graphic settings. Resident Evil 4 Remake is the game that saw the highest amount of VRAM used, at least in one run. The game looks okay, but it's not the best looking. When using SSR quality, max settings, the max amount of VRAM reaches upwards of 10 GB and the average was above 10. Max settings use more than 12 GB at least in one run, as you can see on the screen, but the average were more or less in line and these were around 10.5 GB. When lowering the settings a bit and using 6 GB textures instead of 8, the average is below 10 GB with the maximum being 10. The area that I checked was this village and it needs a lot of VRAM. When it comes to returnal, as I showed before, the VRAM usage is a bit weird. I suspect that the longer the playthrough, the more memory it uses and minor stutters will be present for 8GB cards. This memory usage was solved by simply restarting the game. In the same area from 9GB, it went down to 6.6 and was slowly going up during the playthrough. I report only from one run for this game, so that you have in mind that this may happen. Looking at Star Wars Jedi Survivor, it is clear that in order for this game to run well with max settings, a 12 GB card is required. The area that I showed previously is not even the most demanding in the game, as on the current Sun planet, at the beginning of the game, it needs a bit more. Also, FSR doesn't lower the memory needed by much, so the only way is to lower the settings. Moving on to Dead Space Remake, we see the first game that actually doesn't require more than 8 GB of VRAM for maxing out the settings. FSR quality and DLSS quality simply use the same amount of VRAM, around 7 GB max settings, with the average at 6.8. Even when removing upscaling, the game doesn't reach 8GB of VRAM used, at least in the area that I was checking. Lowering the texture settings seen the average hovering around 6.5 with the maximum needed just a bit more. Checking now a Plague Tale Requiem, the area that I was checking needed around 8GB of VRAM even with DLSS enabled. I suspect that there may be a bit of stuttering with 8 gigabyte GPUs, as without DLSS, the memory needed goes above 8 gigabyte mark with a maximum of 8.5 and an average of 8.2. When lowering a notch the texture settings, the maximum amount of VRAM needed is lower, with the average being above the 6 gigabyte mark. Now, I'm gonna show one run with DLSS enabled and see that 8 gigabyte of VRAM is the mi minimum for this game's max graphic settings, with 10 gigabyte being the recommended amount. There may be other areas in the game that require more, with others less. And here is a run without upscaling, and we can see the memory needed is around 8.5 GB at least at the beginning of the clip. This game looks really good, and the performance is quite good even with ray trace shadows. As I showed earlier, the Callisto protocol requires more than 8 GB of VRAM, as seen in the opening act. Spikes above 8 GB are common, and FSR doesn't dial down the memory needed. The medium settings lowers the memory usage, and I think this is the best option for GPUs 8GB of VRAM. Be aware that the game has more demanding areas when it comes to VRAM needs and the opening act is not the most demanding. Another game that I checked is Redfall. 
and the memory needed is a bit less than 10 GB even with DLSS or FSR enabled. I saw little variation when it comes to memory used, as the max was around 9.9 GB without upscaling and 9.7 when enabling DLSS at max settings, with the average being around 9.6. When we look at the playthrough, we can see that the opening area uses way less VRAM, around 8 GB, but as soon as we approach the next area, the memory needed balloons to almost 10 GB, even though the game doesn't look that good. As it can be seen on the screen, I have maxed out everything and enabled DLSS in another run to show that when using DLSS, the memory needed is quite high, with minor difference between the two settings. This is the area when I, where I checked the VRAM usage. Lowering the graphic settings helps a bit, but the game needs above 9GB. The last game that I checked is Dead Island 2, and I think that this game is another one that a 8GB GPU, if it has the horsepower, will not have any issues in running max settings. When using FSR quality with max settings, the max memory needed was 7.4 gigabytes and the average a bit below at 7.2. Disabling upscaling, the game needs around 8 gigabytes of VRAM with a maximum location 8.3. I saw the same behavior as in Returnal. The game slowly goes up, but not as high as the VRAM needed by Returnal. As it can be seen on the screen, on the left side, when using high settings, the VRAM needed is way below what is previously required with an average of 5.7 and a maximum needed of 6.1. On the right side, the max VRAM use can be seen for max settings. Now let's check the average memory needed across all 11 games. As you can be seen on the screen, the average memory needed by using DLSS is less than using FSR. The difference is not big, but there is one. Both upscaling techniques require below 9GB with maximum observed above 9. Maxing out everything above 9GB is needed with maximum amount used below 10 at 9.8. Even high settings require 8.3 GB with an average just shy of 8 GB. Textures make the game look good. Let's look at the visual quality using max settings. In Witcher 3, this game has implemented ray tracing, but the textures are still old and doesn't look that good. Just look at the background now. Look at the textures behind the main character. And this is normal as it uses just a bit more than 6 GB with max settings, but it still runs poorly as this is using ray tracing. This is what you need to understand, high quality textures require a big amount of memory with minimal performance degradation. Now have a look at The Last of Us, it looks better than Witcher 3. And this is how it should be as it has higher quality texture and the game needs more VRAM for this. And this game or any other that I showed in this video is not created using Unreal Engine 5. This engine promises better graphics with new features to make games more photorealistic and I think games released with this engine will truly be next gen. To achieve this level of quality shown on the screen, more than 8GB will be needed, but how much is still not known. The only game available right now that uses Unreal Engine 5 is Fortnite, but being a battle royale, the game will never push the boundaries of what is possible to achieve with this engine. Until more games are released, we can take a note from what some current games need when it comes to VRAM. Most big games, open world, like Hogwarts Legacy, Star Wars, Jedi, Survivor and Forspoken, are using close to 12 gigabytes when maxing out everything. Others are at the 10 gigabyte mark. Will 12 gigabytes be enough for the next 4 years? I highly doubt it. And why is that? It's because there are graphic cards like the 3060 with 12 gigabytes of VRAM. And that is not a high performance card, but it can play games using high settings at 1080p. And this card is cheap, or it's going to be. In the not so distant future, a 4060 Ti variant with 16 gigabytes of VRAM will be launched. Again, this card will not be powerful enough to max out everything, but it will have no issues with textures as the 3070 will have. But I think the moral of the story is the more VRAM, the better. And on this note, I'll end things here. Thanks for watching and hope you liked the video. Please subscribe to the channel and hit the thumbs up button. See you in the next one.